the sequel. Hit me up. Hi, this is John Raptus from Raptus Talks. Have a nice day. And what? Any good sequel builds upon the already established work and improves it with additional new features. This could be brand new items, abilities, locations, and characters, while still maintaining the core elements of the original work. With 14 years of time between the original and the sequel, Raftisoft had plenty of time to revive this classic from 2005 and freshen it up for present day enjoyment. Since the first installment of figuring out what was so special about this work, my interaction with the game and its creator has been rather fascinating. I got an email from John Raptus himself saying how much he enjoyed my video about his game and how it made him happy that someone noticed all the little details that no one in his game studio thought it would be worth the time to integrate. I also got an ad-free version of Chuzzle 2 simply because I made a positive video about his original game. Due to a series of unfortunate events, however, I could not retrieve the original email, but what I could obtain was an email I sent while I was first researching his work, which wasn't from Mr. Raptus, but rather a member of his product and support team called Kevin, who informed me about a beta test that was currently running at that time. This was the initial instance of me discovering that I could join an open beta to one of my favorite childhood games. I jumped at this opportunity. Oh, shoot. <laughs> And due to such an action, my name will be forever engraved in the credits as a beta tester. While beta testing, what I discovered in the sequel were new slash returning game modes, features, and rooms. In the original, there were four game modes, whereas in the sequel, there are 11. New features such as updated graphics breathes into the game a new life, while still keeping the charm of the original. I can put my arm way out here now. I'm so happy. <laughs> there are a lot more rooms in the game, and some of the returning ones have some expansion functionality to them. Along with the 2005 adaptation, Chuzzle 2 houses the previous four game modes. Classic Chuzzle, Zen Chuzzle, Speed Chuzzle, and Mindbender. In addition to the four fathers, the remaining seven would be Chuzzle Mama, Sun Chuzzle, Chuzzle in Chains, Chuzzle Duel, Prismatic Chuzzle, Chuzzle Surprise, Stunt Chuzzle, Chuzzle Blitz, Mystery Chuzzle, and the Lord Almighty Jesus' favorite game mode, Chuzzle Rapture. All of these ways to play improve the main structure of the game by providing the player with a new way to match these adorable furballs without a complete overhaul to the game mechanics. Chuzzle Mama is usually the first game mode. Once loaded up near the top, a new game feature has been integrated. This integration would be colored eggs, and your goal in this mode is to match the colors to crack the eggs. But if you make a match and it doesn't match any of the colored eggs, or you've already cracked an egg, they don't get added to any of the eggs. Next is Sun Chuzzle. Your goal is to make the board gold by matching chuzzles. If you make a match where no spaces are made gold, those chuzzles go to the lock bar. Once you cannot make any more matches due to the amount of locks on the board, you lose. Stunt Chuzzle, where you perform stunts by matching chuzzles. Although Stunt Chuzzle does sound better than Pattern Chuzzle, the stunts are basically just certain patterns you have to make. This one is the most unique game mode, not only because it's reminiscent of Mindbender, but instead of matching the entire board to the graph above, you get to match just a few patterns. While Stunt Chuzzle is the most intriguing one, the one that I've found the most fun playing is Chuzzle Duel. In this mode, you face off against the CPU. Once you match enough chuzzles, your lock bar fills up, which can be used to hinder your opponent, and slow them down to prevent them from making any moves whatsoever, making you the victor. Re Royale. <laughs> Gotta get that demographic. <laughs> Fortnite. Although I'd find this mode more enjoyable if it had online capabilities so that way I could play either with a friend of mine or just a random on the internet, I did have fun nonetheless. There are also some simpler game modes to try, such as Chuzzle and Chains, where you unlock all the locked chuzzles, Prismatic Chuzzle, where the goal is to match the rainbow chuzzles, Chuzzle Blitz, a race against time, Chuzzle Rapture, attempting to move the chosen chuzzle from the board, and Chuzzle Surprise, where you open prize bubbles to reveal chuzzles. In addition to the act of revealing, rooms are another feature that they've built on. Ah, my foot. We still have the trophy room to showcase your shiny pieces of metal that people have given significant meaning, but now there's three different sections. The first is Trixie trophies, which are earned when you just so happen to do something cool. Unlike me, because I am not cool, look at me. <laughs> <laughs> you see what I'm doing right now? Like simultaneously pop chuzzles all the way across the board, popping three groups of chuzzles at once, or causing a six-step match cascade. I can 
barely say that, dear goodness. Next are the challenge trophies, which are similar to the Trixie trophies, except these are earned in specific game modes instead of just general accomplishments. Last are the dedication trophies, for when you sell your soul to Chuzzle 2 because you have no life, which rewards you for either popping, breaking out, or exploding a certain amount of chuzzles, filling up a certain amount of bottles, getting to a certain level, or filling up the entire rainbow in Zen Chuzzle. Besides the trophy room, which we're already familiar with, there's three others. The Puzzle Room, the Bonus Room, and the Chuzzle Terry. These three are some brand new additions, and each one has its own specific feature to improve the game's enjoyability. When gameplay is occurring, one may find a few puzzle pieces to traverse towards. Once collected, it is then added to one of several boards in the Puzzle Room. After switching to the Puzzle Room, you can then move around the piece, and if another piece seems to fit, it will attach if it's correct. Over time, if one gathers enough pieces, you may very well find a path to unlock one of the original game modes straight on the main menu. Another thing to open are mystery jars. I prefer the mystery box personally, but you know, uh, jars are cool too. Which could very well contain some items that you can use in the game. Or chuzzles. Chuzzles, I think, are also available in the jars. I didn't write that down. Ah, and could be located in the bonus room. Here in this room, one can find items such as Lockbreaker or Instawin. Lockbreaker has the ability to smash any lock at any time during gameplay, and Instawin lets you win a Chuzzle game at any point in time. Last of all is the Chuzzle Terry, where you can take care of your Chuzzle. Oh, look, look how cute he is. Oh, and actually spend the coins that you've earned on something. <laughs> if you've ever taken care of a Webkins or a Puffle, which is basically the same thing as a Chuzzle, except Chuzzles... It's reminiscent on some other models where you can take care of pets. In here, you can purchase food, wallpapers, more stuff, microtransactions, and fun stuff. Ah, yes, because I would consider a jail cell as fun stuff. Oh boy. You may be asking yourself, why are you able to buy a jail cell? Well, it came to my attention, according to a commenter in my first installment, that there is a very ominous chuzzle called Stinky, which is one of the many brand new and very specific features about this game. According to Madison, this very disturbing implication was about Stinky, stating how he always bullies the other chuzzles when they're not playing with something, eats far more than other chuzzles, and if he gets hungry or ravenous, you'll want to watch your other chuzzles and do head counts. So, basically, Raptosoft implemented a new form of Chuzzle to simply make more of a challenge in the Chuzzletarium arena. This is definitely a different approach to a take care of some virtual creatures, that way you can kindly take a break from all the action, so that way you can just have fun petting a creature optional mode, which can be found in some games, kind of like in Sonic Adventure where you can take care of some Chows in Chow Garden. Ah, uh, my legs need to rest. Uh, While I can understand why Raptosoft added this as a way to improve the original concept of Chuzzle, it has shut some people off to the game as a whole, which isn't really fair to the game overall, since it's really up to you whether or not you want to use the Chuzzleterium in the first place, and doesn't really affect the main gameplay. But I do think it's interesting how many negative words are being said simply because they discover a different kind of Chuzzle that does a very specific negative thing. With that said, I also understand the side of people who want to play an innocently fun game and not have to worry about some specific chuzzle harming the other chuzzles simply because he's just a jerk. Cause let's be real here. They want to play a game to relax and to not worry about stuff for a while. Not an additional worry like trapping a very specific negative chuzzle in a jail cell to their already burdened mind. I understand both sides. And while I personally don't know where I stand, cause I'm sitting <laughs> on my bed, I appreciate that Raptosoft tried something new, but I also think that Stinky really wasn't necessary since the main gameplay is stressful enough, especially when you get to level five and have to restart because you died. 
Before I died, however, I was admiring the new features, which both relate to the appearance and the mechanics. Appearance-wise, this game is stunning, and takes what we previously knew as Chuzzle and increased the visual quality. Regarding the mechanics, while the main functionality is the same, the way new features are integrated improve the overall quality of the game regarding enjoyment, bringing a fresh capability of enhancement from the original game. Although that I'm aware that looks aren't everything, I do appreciate Raptosoft's successful attempt at improving the visual style of this fun, colorful, and energetic overall, making the sequel complement the original work from 2005. The updated graphics to the chuzzles makes it look more textured, and the proportions of the eyes to the body enhances the cuteness, rather than looking like a furry sphere with googly eyes. The borders of the game are shinier than before, which gives the game a more polished look. And the fact that the background actually moves instead of just static images, which does improve the visual appealability. But since looks aren't everything, especially because this is a video game, the mechanics are a pretty big feature. These mechanics include features that are during level selection and actual gameplay, since they each contain different elements. During level selection, since there is an actual way to select levels instead of just moving on without having an end in sight, you're faced with several choices. You could either attempt to get all the valuables, such as puzzle pieces, coins, or the mystery jug, or you could reach the goal as quick as possible, since you don't technically have to beat all the levels to win the game. Man, that sounds familiar. Either one of these choices work, so it really depends on your playstyle and whether or not you're a completionist. On the level selection screen as well is an indication on how many lives you have. If you so happen to get three sad chuzzles in a row, each by failing a level, you are now in the danger zone. In the danger zone, some of the chuzzles on the board will start to become angsty teens and refuse to cooperate with you. My arm snapped, can you not? But if you don't win, you lose and have to start over. Well, this did happen to me on level 5, and I was a bit agitated. At least I didn't lose any of my puzzle pieces, because <laughs> that's reassuring. Even though this isn't anything major, I appreciate the attention to detail. I also appreciate that it's an app on my phone instead of my computer. Originally, I didn't have the stance, since my thought process was, oh, since the first one's on the computer, the second one should be too. Even though I used to think that, it makes perfect sense why they'd make the Switch. Not the Nintendo Switch, I mean like the action, not the gaming console. Since Chuzzle 1 was released in 2005, making it 14 years old, this was back before a time even before Apple announced their first iPhone, which was in 2005. 2007. So for the original game to be on the desktop made the most sense at the time, but since those 14 years, technology has advanced. Which makes it more understandable why it's found on Google Play and not Steam. In 14 more years, when Chuzzle 3 comes out on VR, I'll be sure to download it. But for now, I appreciate the hard effort that John Rapt has put in this passion project. Although a sequel wasn't necessary, it was well worth the time put into it by taking the original work and improving the quality, both with the visuals and with the gameplay mechanics. It still has the same charm that the original has, which I'm super glad about. And even though not everyone has this opinion, I'd say this was a very good example of a right way to make a sequel.